Good day, dear listeners, and uh, we wish you to have a very nice uh, day or evening, uh, which depends on uh, which time do you listen to this lecture. Today we are going to have a lecture which is, um, uh, it continues from the previous lecture we had from the Oriental Nights, uh, Oriental Stories, uh, where we told many, uh, some stories uh, from uh, Sufi masters, and uh, we explained some things according uh, to Gnosis uh, in, um, in a small uh, lecture. So this day we are going to speak about uh, Asian stories, uh, stories which are from uh, Chinese and uh, Japanese uh, masters, uh, who are uh, mostly from uh, the Zen. Uh, many of us are accustomed to the Zen and uh, what it is, what it means. Zen it's um, a part of uh, Buddhism and it's very widespread uh, from uh, China and especially in Japan. And uh, now we will uh, we could say that uh, Zen uh, comes from the Chinese word Chan and from the Sanskrit word Dhyana, which Dhyana means a meditative uh, state. And uh, it's a form of uh, Mahayana Buddhism. So this is uh, from Zen, we can say that it could be the path of the Bodhisattva. Uh, Bodhisattva is any person who is in the path uh, towards Buddhahood and is seeking complete, um, complete enlightenment because uh, Buddha, uh, Buddhahood, uh, Buddha means, means the, enlight the enlightened person and uh, who is uh, trying the best uh, for uh, all beings, the best uh, through uh, his personal transformation uh, to be able to make the best towards uh, every living creature. So it, it, this uh, path uh, is also called uh, Bodhisattva Yana. Uh, Bodhisattva Yana is the, um, the vehicle, we could say the vehicle of the Bodhisattva. We could say it's the, um, uh, the part uh, of the Bodhisattva uh, that um, expresses because we need a vehicle our vehicle is our uh, physical body and uh, from our physical body uh, as we had said in a previous lecture uh, it can express uh, whether uh, essence or uh, ego and um, we we can also say uh, our innermost our being which is the spiritual part inside of each and every one of us. So we're uh, the Gnosis Samael Lakshmi, and um, we uh, will start uh, the second part. You can check the first part, which is the Oriental stories. Now we are going to the second part, which is the Zen stories, Asian stories, whatever you might call it. Uh, it's uh, stories from uh, Zen masters, quite interesting stories. And we will give us a sort of explanation according to, uh, to Gnosis, to the Gnostic teaching. And uh, we can uh, say that you can, if you're interesting, interested, uh, we are doing uh, many lectures in many different languages. And you can check our website in www.gnosisamalaxmi.org uh, uh, and uh, you, can say, uh, you can see the um, directives there, the emails if you want to uh, get in contact and uh, listen to uh, more according to the Gnostic philosophy and the way of life. We have many experienced uh, instructors uh, in um, in the school that uh, can guide you uh, through this uh, kind of philosophy. So as this is the second part of um, the, uh, the stories, we will also have a, a third part. A third part uh, we will be with great masters, like our master, uh, stories from uh, Story from our master Samuel Anvor, story from Master Laxmi, story from Master Mitchell, uh, story from Gurdjieff, uh, many stories. <laughs> we will explain some things according to Gnosis, according to the, the philosophy uh, uh, those masters have in life, because this is what why stories exist 
and stories are told because, um, because uh, through stories, as we said in the previous lecture, in the, the first uh, video, um, through stories we can learn, we can... Uh, stories uh, give um, a direct uh, teaching in our essence. This, this is what the stories uh, do. Uh, so uh, we will start um, with what Zen is. Uh, Zen masters uh, really test their students. We have uh, many Zen masters who also uh, are said that they hit their students. We can see this this kind of philosophy is totally different from uh, us, from the Western um, the Western civilization, because they have a whole different philosophy, a whole different philosophy of having a master, having a spiritual master, which is uh, quite different from ours, and. Um, this is the part that we could say that their master is like a guru, is the most important person. And uh, it's not uh, to follow someone blindly, but it's uh, uh, most to know that someone uh, is a master, someone has uh, more consciousness than, than yours and that he can uh, guide you through your own path. This is what masters do. Masters help us uh, in our own path. So. Um, it's, uh, it's a very strict philosophy. We have seen in many movies, uh, many times, uh, Asian masters to hit uh, uh, with something the student in order to learn. Uh, that's why many times they had uh, martial arts in their uh, teachings, uh, <laughs> the Asian masters. And um, it's a, a total different philosophy than uh, the Western. Um, we are not accustomed to that kind of mentality because uh, we are not accustomed to being able to serve uh, properly uh, without asking something. We are not. Uh, we have uh, in, uh, we in the Western civilization has um, uh, achieved, uh, has developed uh, intellectual much more. Um, so it's uh, very difficult because we are not used to meditating in in the in the oriental posture uh, we are not uh, used in calming in this kind of way so it's uh, something uh, totally different from uh, our uh, what we are uh, used to do what we know to do as um, as part of uh, the western civilization so um and uh, um, the, the most important part of Zen uh, that we will see throughout all these stories is that they are trying to, uh, the masters usually try to give something more than uh, feed the intellectual center of the person because for uh, Zen is to achieve um, uh, to the total void, we can we could say, uh, the to empty the mind, and uh, to be able not to think, uh, in order to be able uh, to feel and to uh, uh, bring new information. Because gnosis is uh, what is new, what is uh, new in us. So uh, Zen, uh, it's, um, it leads uh, towards the enlightenment of uh, the mental center, we could say, because uh, Zen masters are uh, mostly um, uh, focusing on the mental center in order to be able to uh, retire the mental and um, to develop uh, other, um, uh, other possibilities of the human being. Uh, so, uh, in order to, but of course, in order to achieve uh, constant enlightenment, in, in order to be enlight enlightened um, throughout your life, throughout every day, every second of uh, life, it's not something that it comes easily. It's not something that you can say, ah, okay, I'm already there, I'm enlightened, and I don't have to do nothing, and uh, I just keep on uh, going uh, from uh, here uh, to... Um, to nowhere. Uh, no, it's not like this uh, because this is a work that uh, uh, someone has to do throughout his uh, whole life and someone has to develop. Uh, we might, uh, as uh, people, uh, achieve, const uh, achieve um, part of enlightenment, and uh, it, but it's, it's not going to be a continuous 
enlightenment because our uh, we are our mind is able to be empty for like some seconds some minutes and it's a very serious work that we have to do in order to um, to achieve something deeper and to achieve something permanent it's not something that we can achieve uh, in 10 minutes with no work and just be enlightened uh, and we will we will discuss all these things because because we have uh, many other stories uh, about um, the, this uh, information. And of course, uh, the Zen Zen uh, most people who follow Zen uh, they like to live in the present moment. It's very important to live in the present moment. Uh, at the present uh, time, what am I doing now? Uh, who am I? Uh, why am I doing this? It's very important. So uh, we could say that uh, Zen help us, uh, and this is the Zen of every moment. We will discuss all this.